Hi all. Today we will be discussing about a, an important topic that is monkeypox. You would have all heard about monkeypox in news and all. That is the reason by which so it has become so important because of the transmission that is going on in various part of the world. So we'll be discussing about monkeypox. Now monkeypox is a zoonosis. So it's a disease that is transmitted from animals to human beings and as similar okay to smallpox the disease is similar to smallpox produces lesions very much similar to smallpox but is less transmissible and has a very low mortality low mortality compared to smallpox so the lesions looks like smallpox but the mortality and the transmissibility of monkeypox is much less than that of the smallpox. So why are we concerned about monkeypox at this particular period? So this is a WHO website. You can see a multi-country monkeypox outbreak is going on in non-endemic countries. Non-endemic countries means monkeypox has been described in Africa since 1970s. It was first described in Democratic Republic of Congo in 1970. And ever since there has been a lot of cases in Africa. Why are we concerned about this particular disease at this particular point of time is that because there's a multi-country monkeypox outbreak that is going on in non-endemic countries. This outbreak in non-endemic countries is predominantly seen in males having sex with males, that is the MSM population, but not exclusively in them, but predominantly in the MSM population. Now, this is a European Center for Disease Control and Prevention website, the European CDC website, you can see there has been 219 confirmed cases. Okay, confirmed much more suspected cases are there. 219 confirmed cases by 25th of May 2022, and the numbers actually are increasing. So there are a lot of cases that have been described in various parts of the world, including Europe, North America, including the United States and Canada, as well as in Australia. So the disease is spreading, and that is the reason by which we are also worried. We have no cases that are reported or confirmed cases in India as of now, but we should be aware of this particular disease. And that is why we are discussing about monkeypox at this particular period. Now, as I told you, monkeypox is not a new disease. This is again a table from the WHO website. So you can see the monkeypox cases from December 2021 to May 2022. I mean, a lot of cases that has been going on in Africa Democratic Republic of Congo itself has 1,238 cases. Only because it has come to the Western world, now it has become more prominent and it is in the news. But this is not a new disease. It has been there. It was first described, as I told you, in 1970s in Democratic Republic of Congo. Ever since this disease has been there, it has been with low mortality, but still has been causing a substantial number of deaths, but much, much less compared to the smallpox. Now, coming to the monkeypox virus, okay, the monkeypox virus, it belongs to a family called as Poxviridae, Poxviridae family, and belong to a genus called as Orthopox, okay, Orthopox genus. Now, this Orthopox genus has various species, including variola, which causes smallpox, vaccinia, Vaccinia is a virus from which we have derived the smallpox vaccine, okay, and cowpox, and then you have monkeypox as well, okay. So what is shown here is the general structure. I can take in this image is the general structure of the pox viruses, the orthopox viruses. As you can see, it is an envelope virus. You can see an envelope, envelope. And then you have a nucleosome. A nucleosome has a double-stranded DNA. So it is a DNA virus. And the proteins inside the nucleus, along with the DNA, forms what is called as a nucleosome. Okay? So it also has a nucleosome. And on either side of the nucleosome, you have what is called as lateral bodies. Okay? There are dumbbell-shaped structures on either side of the nucleosome, which are called as lateral bodies. So it's a DNA virus belonging to the pox virus. Okay, it's an ortho pox virus, and this is the structure of the monkeypox virus. Now, 
coming to the epidemiology of the disease, as I told you, this has been present in Africa for a long time. And in Africa itself, there are two clades of the virus which is seen, with one of which is seen in Western Africa. So this is West Africa, okay, which includes countries like Nigeria, but this is Nigeria. So this is a West African clade, okay, so it's called as clade, West African clade. And another clade which is seen in the Central Africa. So this is a Central African clade. This predominantly includes the Democratic Republic of Congo, and it's also called as a Congo Basin, Congo Basin clade. So these are the two clades of the virus. Okay. So these are genetically slightly different from each other, and they have slightly different clinical pictures as well, which we will discuss. So what is the difference? So we have the West African clade and the Central African clade. So the West Africa predominantly include countries like Nigeria, okay, Ivory Coast, Liberia, etc. Whereas the Central Africa is predominantly Democratic Republic of Congo and neighboring countries. Cameroon is one country which has both clades being reported from that country, that's West African clade as well as Central African clade. So what is the difference clinically between the West African clade and the Central African clade? One is infectiousness. The West African clade is less infectious, whereas Central African clade is much more infectious. So infectious and the infections can go up to seven generations. Okay. And the case fatality rate also, if we consider, the case fatality rate in the West African clade is around 6%, but it can be up to 11% in cases of Central African clade. Now, this West African clade, West African clade is what has caused the outbreak in non-endemic countries. So, which means that the mortality in the current outbreak is much less, okay, because it's predominantly it is due to the West African clade. So that is regarding the clade of or like the clades of the virus that is of that is of monkeypox. Now, as I told you, from the uh, this countries from Africa, now this like virus has spread to various parts of the world. And this is one picture of the map from the European Center for Disease Control. You can see like uh, various part of the countries in which monkeypox has been described is shown in color. So it includes various countries in Europe, okay, as well as in North America, including the United States and Canada, as well as in Australia, new, new countries being cases being reported from all across the world. And that's why they're concerned. And as I told you, this is a West African plate, which is spread, which is responsible for the current outbreak in non-endemic countries. Now, regarding the transmission of the monkeypox virus, how is it transmitted? Though it is called as monkeypox, the predominant reservoir, okay, the, the predominant reservoir of the disease is not monkey, and it is considered that the natural reservoirs could be small rodents, okay, small rodents in Africa. From the rodents, it can infect monkeys as well as humans, both of which are actually incidental cause. So monkeys are incidental hosts like us, and it's like not that they are the primary reservoirs. Primary reservoirs are rodents, which are like predominantly considered to be rodents in Africa. Now from them, like how does the human beings get the infections? The human beings can get the infections with two means from an animal. So usually it is through bush meat hunting. Bush meat hunting refers to hunting of wild animals in Africa. So in that case, if you get a bite from an infected animal or you have contact with the body fluids, okay? Contact with body fluids. So then you will get the infection, okay? The infection is transmitted to human beings. From human beings, the infection can be transmitted to other human beings also by various methods, one of which is by droplet transmission droplet transmission. So for droplet transmission to occur, the transmission occurs through the respiratory tract. If you are very close to a patient who is infected with monkeypox, that is within two meter and for a long time, it is more than three hours, okay? Three hours or more at a very close distance that is less than two meters, there is a risk of droplet transmission. The second method by which the disease can transmit from one human being to the other is through skin lesions contact, okay? Contact with the skin lesions. So monkeypox patients can have large number of skin lesions. So if another person is getting exposed to these skin lesions, there is a risk that he also develop similar disease that's a monkeypox disease. 
So this is a transmission. This is important because we should know how to prevent the outbreak. Okay, how to prevent the spread of this particular disease. Now coming to the clinical picture of monkeypox. How does it clinically present? So monkeypox, the clinical presentation can be divided into four stages. From the first stage is incubation period where the patient will not have any symptoms. It is from the like exposure to the development of symptoms. This period is called as incubation period during which the patient can be asymptomatic. And the duration of the period of incubation that could be five to twenty one days uh, incubation period. And after that. They goes to what is called as the febrile stage. Now the febrile stage is around one to four days, and the patient develops fever with cervical lymphadenopathy. Cervical lymphadenopathy. This is very important. Cervical lymphadenopathy is a typical feature that occurs in many patients with monkeypox. Along with that, they can have headache, malaise, etc. Okay, malaise, etc. Okay. So this is a period of febrile stage after that the patient goes to what is called as a rash stage where the patient develops a typical rash of monkey pox and the rash can remain for 2 to 4 weeks can remain okay going through various stages which we'll talk later and once the patient goes into the through the rash stage after 2 to 4 weeks the patient recovers all the rashes crusts and the scab falls off and they recover Until the scab fills up, okay. Until the scab fills up and new skin is formed, monkey pox lesion can be infectious. Okay, infectiousness can remain until scab fills up and new skin is formed. Now, so how the skin lesion? Okay, we told the rash states that there are lesions which are produced in the skin, and how does they appear? So initially, they appear as a macule, okay, a macule, which is an area of discoloration which is not raised. Then it becomes a papule. A papule means that the skin is slightly raised. You have this papule. Okay. Now the papule gets filled with fluid. Then it is called as a vesicle. You can see the blue here. So it's a vesicle. Now it start also developing what is called as an umbilication at the center. Okay, depressed area at the center, which is called as umbilication. Umbilication. Okay. Umbilication. Now after that, clear fluid of the vesicle changes to pus. We need to call pus tubes. So the lesion is called as pus tube, and then it crusts. Okay, it forms a crust. It's a black crust is formed, which finally falls off. Okay, falls off. So this is the natural history or how does a lesion of a monkey box develops? That is from a macule, okay, which is a skin area of discoloration, forms a raised lesion called as a papule. Papule get filled with fluid, which is called as a vesicle. And the vesicle, when the fluid inside becomes pus, it is called a pus tube. And later it crusts, and the crust falls off as a scab. So this is a lesion. Okay. This is a uh, from the current outbreak, as you can see, the macule and the papule is not shown there. As you can see, the uh, early vesicle is seen. Okay. It is a fluid fill structure. Okay. Fluid fill structure. Then you have a small pus tube, and inside the Basically, the fluid becomes pus filled. Okay, the fluid actually becomes pus, and then it is called as a pus tube. And there is a development of an amplification of a central depression. It's called as an amplification, and then then you have an ulceration and the lesion crust. Okay, then the lesion crust, and finally it fills off as a scab. Until the scab fills off, the lesions are infectious. Again. This is another image so from Africa. You can see the lesions of monkeypox. Okay, and you can see multiple lesions. Okay, multiple lesions, even involving the palms and the sores. The lesions can involve palms and sores also. And look at these lesions, all at the same stage. Okay, all at the same stage. So this is something typical of monkeypox that can differentiate. From chicken box, the chicken box can have lesions at various stages. Okay, some of them will be papules, some of them will be vesicles, pustules. Okay, in monkey box, at a particular point of time, all the lesions will be at the same clinical stage, and that is one differentiating point between monkey box and chicken box. Okay, again, certain other differences that you should know about monkey box versus chicken box. Now, chicken box is caused by varicella, which is a herpes group virus, whereas monkey box is caused by an orthopox virus, which is totally different. But both of which can produce lesions, which are called as vesicles. So we should not confuse one from the other. 
there are certain clinical differences. So first difference is a monkey pox. Lymphadenopathy is common in monkey pox where it is rare in chicken pox. Okay. Lymphadenopathy is one factor. Okay. Lymphadenopathy is common in monkey pox where it is rare in chicken pox. Now the evolution of rash, okay, is much slow. Slow evolution of rash is seen in monkey pox, whereas the rash evolution is faster in case of chicken pox. As I told you, all the lesions are at the same stage, okay, same stage in monkeypox, whereas in chickenpox, if you can see here, there is a vesicle and another lesion, which you can see, which has already ulcerated. So, the lesions are at multiple stages in, multiple stages in chickenpox, okay. Then you have the distribution of the rash, but the distribution of the rash, you can see here, the monkeypox rash is predominantly concentrated in the it is concentrated in the face, okay, as well as the limbs. Face as well as limbs, okay. Whereas in chicken pox, the limbs and the face can be involved, but predominantly it involves the trunk. The trunk is the predominantly involved part of the body. Another difference is that if you look at the palms and sores, it's rarely involved in chicken pox, whereas palms and sore, okay, palms and sores are commonly involved in case of monkey pox. Uh, to summarize, the lymphadenopathy is common in monkeypox, which is uncommon in chickenpox. The rash spreads faster, okay, the evolution of the rash is faster in chickenpox when it is slower in monkeypox. The lesions are at the same stage at a particular point of time in monkeypox, where are different stage lesions can be seen in chickenpox. When you consider the distribution of the rash in monkeypox, the rash is predominant in both the face as well as the limbs, including the palms and soles. Whereas in chicken pox, the lesions predominantly involve the trunk and palms and skulls are usually spared in chicken pox. Now, why are we worried? Okay, these lesions usually will not produce much of a complication in most of the patients, but some of the patients can develop complications. Complications. Now, what are the complications that can be seen? One is that there can be sometimes the lesions can involve the eye, okay. Eye involvement can lead to blindness. Blindness. Okay. Some of these lesions can get secondary infections. Okay. So secondary bacterial infection and sometimes sepsis. A complication can occur in the form of bronchopneumonia. Bronchopneumonia. Okay. Dehydration may be seen in some of the patients. And encephalitis. Encephalitis can also occur as a complication of monkeypox. So these are the complications of monkeypox. Usually it is a disease with less mortality, as I told you, and compared to smallpox, the mortality is much lesser. But still, it can cause, especially in Africa, it has caused like mortality. Even the West African clade can cause around like six percent of mortality, whereas the Central African clade can has caused around eleven percent of mortality. Now Coming to the diagnosis of monkeypox. So this is a viral disease and uh, the method by which you diagnose it is by a polymerase chain reaction, PCR, or what is called as a nucleic acid amplification testing in NAT. So what are the tissues that we use for, okay? For example, you know, in COVID-19, most commonly we use an esophageal swab because it's a respiratory virus. What about in monkeypox? We use the skin lesions are the predominant sample. Okay, the skin lesions are the predominant samples which are used for the diagnosis. Okay, it can be the roof of a lesion. For example, if you have a vesicle or a pus, you remove the roof of the lesion. Okay? You have the lesion and you remove the roof with the scalpel, which can be used as a uh, which can be used as a sample for testing by PCR. Okay. You can also use okay vesicular swab. The once you take off the roof, you will have fluid inside it, which can be taken by a swab. Okay, even the crusts can be used as crust can also be used as samples for PCR. So PCR is a method by which you diagnose monkeypox. Usually, we take the skin lesions for PCR, and at least two lesions should be taken. At least two lesions should be taken. In India, the testing for monkeypox is done at National Institute of Virology, Pune. So if you have a suspected case, you should collect the lesion, okay? There is ICMR 
recommendation for that you have to read that you have to take both the lesions as well as you have to send blood samples to NIV Pune. So the predominant methods by which you diagnose okay a case of monkeypox is by PCR in India. The test is done by the National Institute of Virology Pune. Now we we'll discussed clinical features, complications, as well as diagnosis. Now regarding the treatment. As I told you, monkeypox in most patients is a self-limited disease and it does not require much of a treatment and self-resolving. Some of the patients can develop dehydration and you have to treat the dehydration part. And some of the patients are told we can develop complications like secondary bacterial infections, dehydrations, infallibility, etc. In that case, you symptomatically manage those complications. Suppose you have a secondary bacterial infection, you will have to treat with antibiotics. But usually, as I told you, it is not a severe disease in most of the patients and mortality is less. But again, then there are certain drugs which are effective against monkeypox, the names of which we should be aware of. In fact, these are drugs which are active against smallpox, okay, and approved for smallpox, okay, based on animal studies. But since it is an orthopox virus, these drugs are supposed to work in monkeypox also, okay. The first drug and the most important drug is called as ticovirimab, ticovirimab, okay, which inhibit a particular protein called as P37 protein, okay, in the virus, P37 protein, which is needed for the aggression of the enveloped virus. So the aggression of the enveloped virus requires a particular protein called as P37, which is inhibited by this molecule called as ticovirimab, which has been approved by the FDA for the treatment of smallpox. And it is believed to be effective in monkeypox also, okay, monkeypox also. Now, another drug which has been approved for smallpox can also be used for monkeypox as print cedophobic, print cedophobic. In fact, cedophobic is also active against monkeypox, but cedophobic is a drug which is given Parentally, and it's a drug which is associated with much toxicities like nephrotoxicity. But brain cytophobic is an oral drug with much less toxicity, and brain cytophobic is the second drug. So the first drug is ticovirimab, and second drug is brain cytophobic. So these are two drugs that you should remember regarding monkeypox. Now, about vaccination to prevent monkeypox, as you all know, the smallpox was eradicated from the world by the help of the smallpox vaccination. And the monkeypox being an orthopox virus can also be prevented by the same vaccines. Okay, the same vaccines that are used to prevent smallpox can be used for the prevention of monkeypox also. Previously, we had a vaccine called as Drivax, okay, Drivax, which is a replication competent vaccinia virus. It's derived from the vaccinia virus, it's an orthopox virus. Now, the Drivax was a vaccine which was previously available, okay. Now, there is a second generation vaccine, okay, second generation vaccine of, which is also a replication competent vaccine virus, and this has replaced dry vaccine now. So, this particular vaccine is called as ACAM2000. ACAM2000 is a replication competent vaccine virus, okay, compared to dry vaccine, which is a second generation vaccine virus, replication competent vaccine virus. So, this is one vaccine which is now available, and the second vaccine is called as Gineos. Gineos vaccine. The Gineos vaccine is a replication deficient, which means that it cannot replicate in the human body. It's a replication deficient modified vaccine Ankara. So in short, MBA. It's a modified vaccinia Ankara vaccine. Okay? It's a replication deficient modified vaccinia Ankara vaccine. So two vaccines currently available are ACAM 2000 and Gineos. ACAM 2000 is a replication competent vaccinia virus, whereas Gineos is a replication deficient modified vaccinia and Cara virus. Now, what is the differences between the two vaccines? Was regarding take. What is take? Whenever you are inoculating with the replication competent vaccinia virus vaccines, including the Drivax or ACAM 2000, there is a skin lesion which is produced in the human body, which is similar to the smallpox or monkeypox. It develops a vesicle which forms a pus to later a crust and then it forms a scar. Okay, this particular phenomenon is called as take. Okay, since it is a replication virus, it produces a small skin lesions which passes through various stages like vesicle, pus to and crusting and scar. So this is called as take and this occurs only in replication competent virus. So it occurs in ACAM 2000 
but it does not occur after vaccination with Jainios. Okay, Jainios factor does not produce this particular lesion. The third difference is risk of auto inoculation and contact transmission. Okay, risk of contact transmission as well as auto inoculation. As I told you, ACAM 2000 as well as Rivax are replication competent viruses, and from the skin lesion, it can replicate for some time. And it can spread to various parts of the body itself. It can cause similar lesions in various parts of the body, including skin and the eyes. So that is auto inoculation. And it can also be transmitted to other persons, okay, when it is called as contact transmission. And this was occurs only in replication competent viruses. So it occurs in ACAM, but it does not occur in genuines. Now, regarding the safety of these vaccines, ACAM 2000, like it's for safety versus the replication competent virus, it can cause some adverse effects. Whereas the Jainios vaccine has excellent safety provide, and it can even be used okay, in immunocompromised patients and those with skin disorders. Okay. Whereas the ACAM 2000 being a live vaccine, a replication competent vaccine should not be used in immunocompromised patients. So that is another difference. So the ACAM 2000 is used, is administered by multiple percutaneous punctures by a bifid needle, bifid needle. Multiple percutaneous punctures is made at a single sitting, whereas for gyneos, two doses are required four weeks apart. Okay, and gyneos is gradually replacing the ACAM 2000 as of now, and this is a preferred vaccine that is like currently preferred as the gyneos. Now, whatever is a vaccine, if somebody has an exposure, you have to give the vaccine for post exposure. Okay, so giving vaccine as for post exposure, you should give within four days. Okay, four days for preventing monkeypox in such a patient. Okay, monkeypox in such a patient. Whereas up to 14 days you can give to prevent, okay, to prevent a severe disease. Okay, it will decrease the severity of the disease. So to prevent the disease as such, you have to give it in four days, but you can give, still give the disease up, like the vaccine up to 14 days so that the severity of the disease can be decreased. So, to summarize, the vaccines that are used for prevention of monkeypox is the same vaccines that are used for the prevention of smallpox. We have two vaccines, ACAM 2000 and Gynios. ACAM 2000 is a replication competent vaccine, whereas whereas Gynios is a replication deficient modified vaccine, and Thara. So, that is regarding the vaccination to prevent the monkeypox. Now, regarding infection prevention, as I told you, there are various methods by which the monkeypox can spread. So that is predominantly from human to human transmission can occur through droplet, okay, respiratory droplet, especially when there is a close contact with two meters for a prolonged time. So healthcare workers has to be very vigilant regarding that. Second is that the patient can transmit, okay, from the skin lesion of the patient is transmissible until the scab fell. So these are the two methods by which human to human transmission occurs. So suppose you have a patient in your hospital, what you should do first, you will have to isolate the patient isolate the patient. Second, you have to cover the skin lesion, okay? Cover skin lesions so that you ask the patient to wear a long sleeve shirt as well as pants so the lesions are not exposed and the risk of transmission is reduced and the patient himself is advised to wear a mask, okay? Face mask. That is for the patient. So what is the PPE? Okay, this patient is isolation. You're going to examine the patient. What is the PPE that is required for managing or taking care of a patient with monkeypox? So we told that this transmission is through predominantly to respiratory droplet, but still currently what is advised is that you should wear an N95 respirator. Okay? Even if though, like, there is theoretical, small theoretical risk of aerosol spread also. And that's the reason why an N95 respirator is recommended for all healthcare workers. You should also wear a face shield or a goggles and you should have one pair of clean gloves to touch the lesions, and there should be an isolation gown also, okay? So these are the minimum PP that is required for uh, managing the patient of monkeypox. You should have an N95 respirator, you should have eye protection, which can be for goggles. You should have gloves as well as an uh, isolation gown. It can be a disposable gown. So this is, in short, regarding monkeypox. This particular update has been released because considering the increase in number of cases and as residents, we should be aware of this particular disease because there is a possible such disease scan present to our country also. At the such point of time, you should know the basic clinical features, management strategies, as well as vaccination strategies for the treatment.
treatment as well as control of monkeypox. Okay, thank you.